Local news that matters. Voted best weathercast and home of the live storm tracker Doppler radar. This is Fox 14 News at 6.30. Hello and welcome. Thank you for choosing Fox 14. I'm Nick Summer. Our top story this evening. Today, Governor Jeff Landry signed a state of emergency ex executive order due to the effects from Tropical Storm Barrel. The storm advanced from Texas into western Louisiana throughout the day Monday. The outer connective bands from the tropical storm spread throughout Louisiana, causing one fatality, major damage to homes and businesses, as well as massive power outages. This emergency order will assist affected parishes and provide the necessary resources to protect life, safety, and welfare for citizens across Louisiana. And with Hurricane Barrow leaving many homes flooded in its path from Texas to the interior of the U.S., people are talking about the high cost of flood insurance. Fox 14's Joe Massey joins us with more on how one lawmaker is calling for a revamping of the system. Thank you, Nick. Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy is calling on Congress to take action about the National Flood Insurance Program to make it affordable. It's only six months into the year and severe storms as well as Hurricane Barrel has depleted much of the money FEMA has allotted for claims. FEMA's new risk assessment system called Risk Rating 2.0 has caused uncertainty among homeowners that they will be able to afford the program's premiums and Cassidy wants Congress to step in. The new rating system was implemented by FEMA back in April of 2023. According to the agency, two thirds of property owners might see a decrease in premiums, but some have seen them rise. Many have seen them rise. If a homeowner is in the flood zone, they have to be insured by the National Flood Insurance Program, and in some cases, their premium is higher than their mortgage. These are not billionaires' beach homes. Hardworking people, uncertain whether they'll be able to stay in their home because of a decision made by a bureaucracy with zero input from Congress. The fourth time since the new rating system came into effect, that Cassidy has spoken out on the Senate floor to focus attention on rising flood insurance costs. Tonight at 9, we'll hear from a local agent on flood insurance in the state. Live from the newsroom, for your local news that matters, I'm Joel Massey. All right, thank you very much, Joel. We're well, here at Fox 14. We want to know, do you have flood insurance? Just scan that QR code on your screen or go to myarklamiss.com slash vote and let us know. We'll take a look at what, at what viewers at home say at the end of tonight's show. And in Arkansas, South Arkansas University Tech was placed on lockdown this afternoon. Security at the campus received reports of a man that appeared to have a rifle near the fence at the Arkansas Fire Training Academy, which is only a few miles from the campus. When county law enforcement began searching the area, both the training academy and Tech campus locked down. A little over an hour later, the lockdowns were lifted and several officers remained in the area. We'll hear from the chancellor of SAU Tech tonight at 9. Now onto a news update. More information is in on the alleged financial misconduct from the former superintendent of the Monroe City School Board. Fox 14's Haley Hines has more details. In 2023, the Louisiana Legislative Auditor's Office began investigating a complaint in regards to financial misconduct in the Monroe City School District. The complaint was in connection to former superintendent Brent A. Verdreen. Verdreen was placed on administrative leave. Amidst the claims of financial misconduct, he chose to retire. A March 2024 audit conducted by MCSB and the investigation from the Louisiana Legislative Auditor's Office found that Vadreen had allegedly submitted false records for the purchase of retirement service. All information from the investigation was turned over to the Washington Parish Sheriff's Office. OPSO found that Vadreen had committed two felony counts of filing or maintaining false public records, one count of felony theft, and one felony count of malfeasance in office. Evidence found on Vadreen's MCSB desktop disclosed that Microsoft Word documents were created showing he received a check for the requested amount prior to receiving the funds. Another was created as a letter of proof sent to the MCSB chief financial officer. Vadreen also received a check for $67,422 for one year of credible service from the teacher's retirement system of Louisiana. Police discovered the cost of one year of service was less than the listed amount. Vadreen allegedly sent a non-editable copy of the legitimate TRSL letter to a school board IT employee. Five minutes later, he received an editable version of the file in return. Vadreen was taken into custody on July 3, 2024. His bail was set at $22,500. He has since bonded out. For local news that matters, I'm Haley Hines. 
We also have information tonight on a missing person in Washita Parish. Take a good look at your screen. The Washita Parish Sheriff's Office needs your help finding this missing man. Judson Talbot is 38 years old. He stands six feet tall and weighs about 160 pounds. Talbot's last known location was Pleasant Valley Drive in West Monroe. He is known to frequent the Balcomville area. Please contact the number on your screen with any information. And in tonight's crime alert, a bastard man was found dead in Calhoun. Deputies in Washtenaw Parish are now investigating. According to Colonel Larry Knight, deputies were called to a home on Glen Acres Road on June 22nd. 56-year-old Stephen Buffington was found unconscious on the front porch and pronounced dead on the scene. His body has been sent for an autopsy and the death is being investigated. We will keep you updated as more information becomes available. And police have confirmed a shooting in Bastrop. The incident happened just after noon Monday at the Joyce Apartments. Upon arrival, police found two victims suffering from gunshot wounds. Both victims were transported to a hospital in Monroe, and there is no word as of now on the conditions of these victims. The shooting remains under investigation. We'll keep you updated with any new details on air and online at MyerClamis.com. And staying in Bastrop, a vigil was held on Monday to bring residents together after the community faced many deaths. The community gathered at the flagpole in front of Morehouse General to pray in light of recent tragic events. Less than two weeks ago, a young teen was found murdered in a wooded area in Bastrop. Just days later, a three-year-old was struck by a bullet during a drive-by shooting. Monday's event is an effort to uplift residents and promote unity within the community. We spoke with an attendee about what this gathering means. I just thank God for everybody coming out because we know that we have had situations in Bastrop and we know that if we come together as a body of believers, God will intervene for us. Continuing coverage of the vigil, the mayor of Bastrop was also in attendance. Tensions grew after she was approached by a resident. Fox 14's Haley Hines joins us live in the studio for more on this story. That's right, Nick. The peaceful gathering was followed by an emotional encounter as a community member demanded answers. The town of Bastrop has experienced several deaths that have rocked the community. In an effort to uplift residents, a prayer vigil was held to promote unity within the community. Residents spoke on what the event means to them. Guns, violence, drugs. I have grandchildren. I have great grandchildren. But you know what? I hope and pray that our community don't stop right here today. The gathering comes after the town lost an employee of the Morehouse Parish Hospital in the alleged murder of 14-year-old Ashley Barnes. Talk to me first, I got a lot of questions. I got a lot of them. Following the vigil, an interview with Mayor Betty Alford Olive was interrupted after a community member addressed the mayor and expressed how she felt community leaders failed the town of Bastrop by not being present and showing up for the Barnes family. I called for you. You know what your people told me? You said you was busy. You were going to sit somebody. Mayor Olive denied all claims and stated she made calls to the family of 14-year-old Barnes to send her condolences. With emotions still running hot, the conversation continued. I'm not going to argue. I reached out right, to the right, family. Right, 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 right. I'm not going to argue. With no, but Ms. Olive, you, you got to ask. You can ask the family. We, exactly. After the fact, after the fact that this Mohouse Parish dropped the ball, after the fact, y'all spoke to the family. I'm, I'm right there the whole step away because I'm giving everything that's going on. Okay. After the exchange of words, the two came together with a hug. Mayor Olive concluded the conversation by encouraging Everett to join her Stop the Violence team. I apologize if I was disrespecting anybody because I don't mean that. I just, I just got to find out. I just got to. Join our team. Join our team to Stop the Violence. Together we're strong. We'll get through this here. Everton Mayor Olive exchanged contact information and Everett continued saying something must be done. Reporting live in the studio for local news that matters, I'm Haley Hans. Thank you, Haley, for that report. Coming up next on Fox 14 News at 630, tributes have been pouring in for civil rights pioneer and New Orleans activist Tessie Prevost. That story is next.